Well, hello guys and gals, Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And as promised, it's another Nabu hacking video, just a few days after the last one. I've had a chance to clean up some um, nagging bugs and uh, incompletions in the firmware. And look, my Nabu has its case back on. It's all pretty, just like it was coming from the factory. No more guts hanging out. But, but, all of the hardware modifications I showed you in the last video are still in there under that case. It still has the 32K bank switched EEPROM modification in place. So if I turn it on, uh, we're going to boot right into my monitor as per usual. And BASIC is built in EEPROM now, so just be cold or warm start. We'll do cold start, memory top. Now, I fixed some problems I had. The problem with backspacing in BASIC, if you fat finger something, I have fixed that. That works now. And BASIC is fine with that. Um, I was overthinking it. Basically, uh, whenever I was doing a delete, BASIC was firing the, uh, the character I wanted to delete in an extra space back at me. So I had three characters then that I needed to delete. The original mistake, the space, and then the, the original character again. So whenever I hit the delete key, I just set a flag that, hey, a delete key's been hit, and the next three characters that get printed get backspaced. So easy peasy. It works good. Basic seems happy with it. Um, I can type um, programs in in basic and backspace, and basic is happy. It understands it. No more syntax errors. It's all working good. Now, I have implemented a couple of other things. If you look over here at my laptop screen, Look at that. So yeah, what I've done is I have echoed everything that goes out to the Nabu screen over here. I have echoed it out the HCCA and it's being picked up on my laptop. Okay, and I'm running TerraTerm terminal program. So anything I type in here in TerraTerm is also going to get echoed into the Nabu. It's like having a second keyboard down here. So what are the advantages of this, you ask? Why would I do this? Well, I've got BASIC working over here on the NABU. Yeah, it's working good. What I don't have yet is mass storage. Mass storage is a little ways down the road. But, but I can kind of emulate mass storage with the terminal on my laptop, okay? So how am I going to do this? Well. Uh, I don't know if you can see this because the print's kind of small, but I'm going to come in here to settings and I'm going to select send file. I don't know if that's showing up at all for you on there. Send file off the menu. And then I get, you know, prompted for what file I want to send. Well, I've got some basic files here. Some basic programs. Uh, here's one. It's called Civ. Civ of Eratosthenes. So let's send this and look. Oh! Yeah, it's printing out on the screen there, but look, it's printing out on the on the Navu screen. So we just sent that basic program into the Navu from my laptop. We're kind of emulating mass storage here. I guess we're not really emulating it, it's just kind of a roundabout way of doing mass storage. So we've got the uh, program in the Navu now. So let's see, I can run it. Uh, it wants a limit. Okay, it's, it's going to generate prime numbers up to a certain limit. We'll go 400. How about that? And it takes a while. It's an old processor. It's slow, 3.5 megahertz, but still, there's all our prime numbers up to 300 printed out. Cool. And, of course, it got echoed out here to the laptop screen. So... All right, so we can get programs into the NABU without having to type them all in on the NABU keyboard. But check this out. Suppose we do a listing on this file. Okay, there's the file. But look, it got echoed back to the laptop screen. So if we were recording a log file off of the laptop screen, we could record that and save it. And then we could upload it again another time. So this is how we implement, you know, sort of poor man's redneck mass storage until I get real mass storage on the NABU. We'll just uh, 
transfer stuff back and forth over the HCCA. I'll just echo everything that goes to this screen out to um, the terminal and I'll echo everything that comes from the terminal into here. So that's how we implement mass storage. Move stuff back and forth and it works really well. Okay. Now there is something I need to show you on this to make this work. Alright. So I'm going to zoom in as tight as I can. I may have to I hope you can see this. The contrast is not great. But we need to get some settings in TerraTerm to make this work. Okay? Serial port settings. Well, first off, whatever serial port your RS-422 con converter comes up as, put that up here. Speed, 111,000. Okay? Data, 8 bits. Parity, none. Stop bits, 1. Flow control, none. And then down here, we need transmit delays because we're dealing with BASIC here. And it's trying to interpret the lines as we're sending them. And BASIC is really, really, really slow. Especially on the NABU where the process is only running about 3.5 megahertz. Okay? So we need some delays. This is a problem I ran into with my Teletech System Master when I was transferring BASIC files over serial ports to it. Um, I needed to put these delays in too, even though it's a full 4 megahertz processor. BASIC is slow. Okay? So you want like 15 milliseconds per character and at least 200 milliseconds per line. Um, it's going to take a while to load a file, especially if it's a big one. But probably not that much more than accessing it off of a disk or cassette, certainly. And um, But yeah, you might even need to play with that. You might need to up that 200 a little bit if you're getting syntax errors, okay? Or line numbers are getting mangled. You might need to up that. So that's how you set this up. So you can move basic programs in and out of your NABU with its nifty built-in basic. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. Um, I have changed a few things. Um, I have changed the name of this whole project to more reflect what my goal is. It's the standalone NABU project. And uh, we're on my monitor version. Oh, well, that's wrong. I need to update that. Okay. We are actually at 9.00. So that's what will be on the website uh, for you to download um, once this video goes up. I will update that and uh, maybe make a couple of other minor changes to the firmware before it goes onto my uh, blog here at mdpub.com slash nabu slash to uh, make it available to the public. This code does require um, the modification to the NABU, okay? At the very least, if you're going to want to run this monitor, you're going to have to do the 4K to 8K conversion, okay? If you want to have BASIC built in too, you've got to do the other hardware conversion I showed you in the last video so that you can run out of a 32K EEPROM, okay? With bank switched ROM, four banks of 8K. It's a super simple hardware conversion. Anybody could probably do it who has any experience at all playing with computer hardware. A lot of people who don't have any experience playing with computer hardware could probably do it too. All right. Um, I have eliminated a couple of options from the menu. Um, let's see. Um, port dump I think I eliminated a while back because it tends to crash the computer. Um, it's more of a tool for exploring unknown hardware anyway. And a NABU is, is fully documented so I didn't really need that. Um, I have also taken out um, binary load and binary dump for now because I just haven't had a chance to update them to work off of the HCC interface. Um, the idea is you could load and dump binary files um, from a laptop just like you do in basic files, but I just, like I said, I haven't had a chance to uh, work on those and get them working through the HCC interface. Um, that will probably be a future project on my to-do list get those working and put them back on the menu. Um, everything else here works. Um, basic, of course, works. You've seen that. Memory copy, copy from one area of memory to another works. Memory dump works. Uh, memory edit works. Um, jump to an address and execute works. Um, help just prints this screen. Um, loading an Intel hex file works. Because uh, I was, hey, you've seen that work in previous videos where I was loading basic in as an Intel hex file before. I had um, 
before I had the 32K upgrade going where I could burn it into EEPROM and just have it have it there immediately. Um, read from an IO port, write from an IO port, they work. I've demonstrated those in previous videos. So all this works. Um, let's see what else we've got. Um, control E erases or clears the screen. Control A prints the entire character set except when it gets to um, control G you get the bell because uh, I have that built in. Control G makes a bell sound. Um, but there's the entire 256 character character set all back in there because I have plenty of room in the EEPROM now. I had cut off the bottom 128 characters because I really wasn't using them and I needed the space when I was didn't have the bigger EEPROM option but I do now so all that's to back in there. So there's all of our characters. Press reset and we come back up here to the monitor. Um, I am just so stoked to have basic working so so well. It's just you know I've, I've solved all the problems with it. I had a very annoying problem like um, let me let me see is uh, let me try basic again. I wonder if that Civ program is still in there. We'll do a warm start and list it. Yeah the Civ program is still in there. Good. So let me run this. I had a very annoying problem that took me a long time to track down and figure out. Um, let's go 500 this time. Um, during a printout like this it would just stall and stop and it wouldn't do anything until I hit a key on either keyboard because well they're both kind of together now and then it would print out for a while and it would stall again. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? And it took me the longest time to figure out that problem. What it is is um, Grant's Basic is polling um, the keyboard to see if there's a character ready for it all the time. Like if you want to abort the program um, in the middle of a run with a control C or whatever, it's polling the keyboard to see if it, anything's coming in. Well, the darn keyboard down here sends out a... Um, watchdog character every about 3.74 seconds or so and the basic was seeing that watchdog character and just sort of like huh just sitting there waiting for some kind of input it could understand so that's that was the problem so in I, I edited the, the routine that just um, checks the keyboard for input to see if there's anything in this input buffer if uh, it's that watchdog character I just dump it and um, tell basic hey there's nothing here so that solved that problem but boy that was a couple of days of work just trying to figure out what in the world was going on with that so but everything's working good now everything's fine um it's it's basically i have achieved my goal of uh when i got the nabu I pulled the EEPROM out of it and I said I'm going to write all my own firmware for this and I'm going to get basic in ROM. I'm going to have a standalone computer. You can hook it to a TV. You can just plug it in the wall and you're ready to go writing basic programs just like a lot of the computers that you bought back in the late 70s, early 80s. You know, the Apples, the Commodores, um, the TRS-80s, you know, the stuff you put, the, the well that I played with, you know, back in high school. You know, those kind of computers. They didn't need to be hooked to a network. They didn't need to be hooked to the internet. Anything. I mean, I do have kind of a, a kludgy uh, mass storage system going here. But hey, it works for the moment until I can get actual mass storage in the NABU. Now, that's coming. I'm working on that. But it's going to be a little while down the road. Because, at you know, I think in the last video or the one before, I said I really need to take a break from the NABU and work on some other stuff. Because I've been working on this pretty much exclusively since just before Christmas when I NABU arrived. So, um, I made a couple, a lot of progress in a couple months, haven't I? Not even two months. So I've got a couple of other projects sitting on the back burner gathering dust that I need to work on. So I'm at a really good stopping point here with the NABU, I think. I've pretty much accomplished what all my initial goals were with it. You know, I've got it as a standalone computer with basic in ROM, and there's uh, room for further expansion there. Um, so I think uh, this is, might be the last NABU video for a while unless I put out just uh, maybe a few bug fixes or enhancements. 
Um, you guys go ahead and play around with the uh, with the code and uh, try and break it. Let me know. Let me know if you find problems with it, okay? Because um, I'm sure I can look at the same problem a hundred times and not see it. You guys, it'll, it'll be annoying right off. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you download this stuff and you play around with it in your Naboos. You let me know if you find issues, okay? And, uh, oh my goodness, what a trip. But I'm glad I'm here. I'm really glad I'm here. Uh, got my Naboo right to where I wanted it. And uh, thanks so much for those of you out there who've uh, watched this entire video series and uh, left a lot of great, encouraging, positive, complimentary comments. Um, and, and thanks for all the suggestions, too. Keep those suggestions coming. I would really appreciate it. Suggestions for what else you'd like me to see on the NABU once I get back to working on it. Um, I've got some ideas of my own, but hey, you know, um, I'm not, not going to work in a vacuum. If you guys have some good ideas, I'll implement them, too. So let me know what you think. And thanks a lot for watching this video. Um, Subscribe to see those future videos when they come out. Subscribe to see my other retro computing videos because, like I said, I've got other projects I'm going to be working on. They've been sitting on the back burner gathering dust. Some electronics projects, too. Uh, so subscribe to see those videos. Uh, check out my main channel, Omega Geek 64 if you're at all interested in how I uh, recover gold and silver from e-waste, which is what I do a lot of. Basically finances all my other endeavors. Check that out. You might find it interesting. And thanks a lot for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.